Okay guys, today we're going to do something a little bit different and um, instead of showing you just the capture footage and um, the end result and the, and the scope and that, we'll just have a quick chat about what um, I've done for each particular image and then you'll learn a little bit about um, what, what we're doing and, and, and why we're doing it for some of them. Um, probably only going to take one or two minutes longer and then the capture footage and all that will still be there and you can have a look at the final um, image. Um, we'll start off with uh, the daub. Um, this one's a 24 as you can see in the thumbnail and with the wonderful Nexus camera corrector um, and reducer we've knocked an f3.3 down to f2.5 and that definitely opens up a, a lot of um, um, flexibility in how we're imaging and, and what we're doing. Um, the, the main problem here is probably that I'm still just capturing video. So I want to show you guys what we're doing, but I think the images could be a lot better if I wasn't exposing for video and capturing in video and then converting the files back. Um, so the F ratio is 2.55 and that means it's about 1500 millimetres of focal length. Um, for while ever I capture DSO work with this, I, I will always use the uh, need the chroma corrector to um, capture these and, and not make it look like a fishbowl because the 3.3 will do that. So um, the capture technique I use in the videos is pretty poor for an image as we just said. So I convert, um, I was capturing in AVI um, and actually in 8-bit because you couldn't capture in AVI and 16-bit to the program I was using and it wouldn't recognize my um, processing software or uh, Adobe, oh, no sorry, uh, DaVinci Resolve wouldn't recognize the SER file so there was a lot of mucking around but now I actually use PIP, I'll show you on the screen here I use PIP to convert the 16-bit SERs back to AVI and then use Handbrake to convert them into MP4 and then I put them into the video in DaVinci Resolve to show you guys. So there's a lot of compression along the way there that we're losing and it sort of becomes a bit of the same too with the um, capturing in SER 16-bit and then developing um, some TIFFs out of that, processing down for TIFFs, converting and then running them through um, PixInsight. And while I'm doing that, I use a subframe selector, um, particularly on this um, capture of M42. There's a fair bit of high cloud around. Um, it was a beautiful night up there, but um, you can see that the dimness and the capture is like fluctuating. So um, uh, what, what my general settings for imaging are, I originally started out and I just basically dragged the gain right up until I found um, where the gain started to fall off and um, we started to get some really noisy images and that ended up being really high. So I'm actually shooting at 89% gain, which is amazing considering um, the images we're getting back here. So it's just a great um, basically a display of how the IMX 571 sensor handles gain. And so I set that and I shoot all my flats and everything originally. Um, I'm now binned one, uh, two to two, which gives me one arc second per pixel. And I leave everything um, the same. And now all I do is just reduce the exposure to make it look something similar as through the eyepiece but not to blow out any of the, the highlights and that. We don't want to make it look shit on, on video. So that's about it. So basically, depending on the, the target that we've got, and I've done, uh, I think there's 11 here. I'll put up a quick thing on the screen. Um, basically, I'll just leave everything the same at nearly 90% gain, and I'll just drag the um, exposure down. And... The way we can get away with that is because we're f2.55 and also we're capturing a couple of hundred video, uh, a couple of hundred stills in these few minutes. And to think about this, I used 220, what have I done? Uh, 229 files, and each of these files is 0.29 
milliseconds. So basically it's four frames per second. So because we're stacking so many frames, we can get away with it. So it, if you were to shoot six hours of five minute subs, um, 6, 12, uh, 72, you, you'd only be stacking 72 images. We're already stacking four times that, so we can get away with that little bit of extra noise. Um, what else did I want to say? Uh, unfortunately, I was wandering around with my red light and um, didn't realise that I was throwing reflections at the, um, uh, the secondary mirror and then obviously into the camera. So I had to cut about um, a couple of hundred of these frames out but ultimately, I just set a, um, the subframe selector. And because of the high cloud and that, I use the, um, the number of stars in each image to predict the clearest and the best sections of the video. So we ended up with that 229. And we actually end up with 66 and a half seconds worth of actual acquisition time. But like I said, 229 frames. And then you can really work with it. So um, it, it seems to be working okay. I'm very happy with the uh, images as they turn out. And also, I don't want to turn them into art. They want to still look something like what we see through the eyepiece. You know, like I, I think I'm robbing you of, of uh, an experience if you get to look through something like 24, 20 inch, whatever. And you say, well, that doesn't look anything like what Damo's pumping out. So fuck demo. So um, all of my images, uh, are none of them are double layered or any of that type of stuff. They're all single layered and I'm trying to keep everything as, as even as possible. And you can see that um, I, I could have gone much harder on the, on the video, but uh, on the processing, but and blow out the core and all that. But this is basically what you see through the telescope. So um, I hope you all enjoy. I'll leave the, um, the capture data up on the screen there. You can have a quick look, pause the video and have a quick look. And then we'll show you the video footage and the final still. So I hope you're happy with um, uh, the new format. If you're not, you just want me to shut up and just do what I was doing before, let me know. But if you're interested, because all of the different videos you're gonna see on this session when we're up in the B1, B2 area, they're all slightly different. And you can really see, I've got the Trifford Nebula and the Horsehead and um, Flame and um, Tarantula and there's, there's lots of good stuff to see. So hopefully you all enjoy it. Have a great weekend, week, month, whatever. And remember, comparison is the thief of joy. All right, guys. Bye for now.